you're entirely new to blended and online learning, as most of you are, consider starting with a unit in your curriculum that allows you to have flexibility. Then consider the time of year you would have the most flexibility. I want you to actually put this plan into practice after this course is over, so to help you be successful, consider designing a unit that you might teach after the midpoint of your school year. After the midpoint, you and your students know each other well. You're very familiar with your students' individual needs and you can anticipate the best blended model for your setting, if you're focusing on blended unit, rather than one that's fully online. Now your unit plan doesn't have to relate directly to your syllabus assignment, although these assignments are designed to flow from one to the next. You'll see that my unit plan example is for a new grade and subject area. I did this for variety's sake. So your unit plan can be entirely different from the content you referenced in your syllabus assignment as long as it still fits in your content area and grade level for K-12 students. Now that you have in mind which unit you'd like to design, take a look at the unit design template and the unit plan checklist linked in our course materials. The checklist is a description of minimum requirements for a successful unit plan. The criteria on this checklist will be used by your classmates to evaluate the quality of your unit plan. So read this checklist carefully. You should aim to get all the criteria checked with yes, but that's not always possible, and you'll need to earn at least 15 of the 18 to get a score of 80% on the assignment. You'll notice that the criteria on the checklist align to the self-check column on the unit plan template. Also, I've provided you with an example unit plan. Some of the criteria are straightforward, like course information, but some require a bit more explanation. Let's walk through the tutorial by example together. To get started on this tutorial by example, I've opened up the example, which is written for seventh grade unit on Africa. And then I've also pulled up the peer evaluation checklist called Designing a Blended Online Unit of Instruction. So first, in the example which uses the template found in our course materials, you're going to find the prompt as to what information you need to include on the far left-hand column. In this case, it says unit or course goals. You're going to want to type in your information here in the center column. So in this case, it's a unit on Africa. I also state that it'll be fully online. And then here in the far right column, this is going to be important in this tutorial. At the top, you're going to see that it references a letter and a number. This one says CA1. Well, when it says CA1, it's actually referencing our rubric in the INA call standard A1, which addresses goals and objectives. See this A1? And it's, ref it's asking you to check to see if the objectives are clearly written to explain what the learner will know and be able to do. And you could give yourself a check of no or a check of yes. So let's scroll down a little bit more. This one with standards, okay? Here in the second column, you would write out your standards. I recommend that you also link your standards. Your peer evaluators will really appreciate being able to click on those. Then, in the far right column, you're going to see it references A2. A2 is, once again, referencing this peer evaluation checklist, A2, which addresses the objectives, assessment, content, and learning tasks. Now, you're going to see that A2 and A1 appear again in other categories as well. So sometimes you may find some information that really addresses the standard A2 under standards, but then you would also see that under the area of assessments. So this just helps you identify which standards this particular prompt contributes to. In addition, I've provided an explanation below that, which provides you with a little extra help. So this is my effort at some differentiation. So if you need some help learning about standards, you can, um, or writing learning objectives and alignment and so forth. I have those links here on the far right column for you, as well as some explanations. And if we look back at the peer evaluation checklist, you'll want to check yourself to see how well you did using those standards referenced here. And then in addition, when you complete your assignment 
and you upload your unit plan. You will then assess or evaluate three peer unit plans using this checklist. And so you'll want to be sure that you know exactly which I may call national standards for online quality courses you're referencing. And so that's going to help you do that. Now that we've walked through the tutorial, you have a better idea of the unit plan you'll be creating. I strongly recommend that you use the template. The template will make it easier for your peers to evaluate your work. Speaking of peer evaluation, you'll be evaluating the unit plan written by three of your classmates. The criteria for a successful unit plan are the same for everyone, so you'll be using the same checklist you used to self-check your own unit plan. Please keep in mind that some peers are not classroom teachers. Also, some are not native English speakers. The objectives for this module are at the introductory level, and your evaluation of your peers should represent introductory expectations. Be kind and be helpful with your evaluation and comments.